Yo, good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. It's a cold rainy day here in Southern California and I decided to make a Cod Lizard Brumation video because right now it is cold and that is when my lizards are sleeping and slowing down. So I'm gonna show you how to go through that process. Girl, you are my fire. So for those of you who are wondering, what in the world is brumation? So you know how bears go through hibernation during the winter time? Well, it's basically the same thing for lizards. They're gonna go through a sleeping period during the winter time for about three to five months and then wake up and then start to breed and make some babies. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that in captivity because we have to imitate what they do in the wild and just basically do that with wine coolers and hydrating them. So there's a few things that we gotta do. This process is not for beginners. I'm just gonna say that because this will kill your lizard if not done correctly. So either pay attention, do other research, or just don't put them through that process. And if you are new to my channel and don't know what a collar lizard is, guys, come on, let me show you. Check out these pictures. Beautiful lizards, right? I can never get enough of them. All right, so step one to brumation. So I usually start brumation around November to December. So one month before that, I spoil my lizards. I bulk them up, feed them once, two times a day so that they can gain some weight so they, they can make it through that process because they're gonna be sleeping. They're gonna be out for like four to five months. So you're gonna wanna make sure that they are a good weight so that they can make it through that time of period because an unhealthy lizard will not make it. And I'm gonna show you some pictures of what they should look like before they go into brumation. So now that you have a nice bulked up lizard, you're gonna to want to move on to step two, which is reducing the light and heat throughout a period of weeks. So I usually do like one hour a week of reducing the light and heat. And also during this process, slow down the food to like no food at all because what happens when a lizard doesn't have any heat source? Well, that food is gonna stay in their stomach and their digestive system, which is gonna eventually rots because there's no heat source for them to digest their food. So you're gonna wanna make sure that during this process of when you are reducing the light and heat, you're gonna wanna clear out all their system with no food at all. So usually what I do is take out all the poop and everything in their enclosures to make sure that they are not continuing to you know, go because um, that's the way I track it to make sure there's no more food. I stop feeding them, have the heat source in there to make sure they're digesting everything. So once I see that there is no more in the enclosure, um, that's when I know that they're, they're ready. And it takes like about a month. So you're going to want to reduce that light source and heat during that period of time. Hope I explained that correctly. <laughs> also, another important thing is make sure that there are no insects in your enclosure. Like, sometimes crickets will get under water bowls or just hide places. You wanna make sure that they're all out of there because your lizard can possibly eat one of these and then that can start over the whole process because they have to digest that. So make sure there's no more food or hidden insects in the enclosure. Oh man, it's raining so hard. I just see the rain just pouring down right here. I'm filming, I'm filming next to the door and Water is getting inside. <laughs> but anyways, moving on to the next step. So we bulk them up, right? You have a nice, healthy, fat lizard. And we also reduced the light and heat source and took out all the food from their system. So now that you completed those two steps, we wanna find a place of where to put them through that four to five month term. So uh, ideally you wanna have the temperatures be around 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Here in Southern California, I can't have them in a stored room like in my closet or under uh, stairs because it's not gonna be uh, that temperature here in Southern California. So I have to put them in a wine cooler and I have like two thermometers that are attached to the wine cooler and a temp gun too. I can make sure that it's um, appropriate temperatures. Anything above that, like if it gets up to 65 degrees or higher, that's just gonna kill your lizard because what's gonna happen is their metabolism is gonna increase and they're gonna be using that stored muscle and fat for energy and that's just gonna kill your lizard. Also, the temperature can get too cold as well. Like if it gets below 40 degrees, they're gonna freeze. So that's also another way you can kill your lizard. So make sure you are 
checking all those temperatures daily, having multiple thermometers attached to either if it has a wine cooler or if you live somewhere where you're going to be keeping the lizard like in a basement or in your closet or somewhere that's dark because also that's another thing I forgot to tell you guys you want to make sure that it has a minimal light because uh, they want to be asleep they don't want to be bugged by this bright light when they're trying to sleep during that term right so um, if you have them stored somewhere else in your room you want to make sure that temperature stays around that 50 to 55 degrees if not just put them in a wine cooler and just uh, make sure you have a few thermometers attached to them next step man I mean, talking about those temperatures I'm over here freezing next to this door <laughs> but next step what is it step three step four whatever next whenever next step it is uh, you want to make sure that the lizard is being hydrated so I give my lizards water weekly and also um, another thing, you want to make sure that you are giving them fresh air, poking holes through the container, open the wine cooler, giving them fresh air every single day, checking on those lizards every single day to make sure they are okay. Um, so yeah, I usually just put water in their mouths, mist them, also gives them water around their eyes and their head. You can also use the little drippers or a syringe. Uh, yeah, hydration is very important in this brumation process, so make sure you're keeping those lizards hydrated. You can also put water dishes in your containers, but I prefer to do it manually because I know that they're getting water, so I have a set date. Every single Friday, I'm gonna check my wine coolers and have a drink of wine, I mean, uh, give them water, and yeah, so make sure they're hydrated. That's very important. Do it weekly and keep those lizards healthy. Okay, so four to five months has passed by and you are ready to wake up your lizards because man, even I miss my lizards right now. I want them to come out already, but um, it's almost it's almost close to four months already. So I'm going to be taking the lizards out of the wine cooler and putting them in room temperature, which is around like 75 degrees here. And you're going to leave them in there with no food, no light, no heat, anything. Just leave them in there uh, for like about a couple of days, like two days and they're going to start becoming more active and coming out of brumation. So after those two days, you're going to want to put them back in their enclosure. I usually put like an hour or two of heat and UVB. Do not feed them until like day five, and then I just slowly start to increase the heat and light source uh, like an hour every single day until it comes back to like, I usually do 10 hours a day of light, of light and heat. And also, um, just make sure that you're feeding them slow, little by little, you know, because they were sleeping for a long period of time, so you just don't want to, like, overfeed them again. So, making sure that they are warm enough to digest that food and keeping track of them. And also, if it gets too cold where you're at, make sure you have, like, a heat source at nighttime so they can fully digest that food that's in their system. And there you have it. That is how you play your lizard through brumation. So, uh, once again, this is not meant for beginners. Uh, this is a scary process that can kill your lizard if not done correctly, so make sure you do a lot of research. Another person you can check out is Colorful Color Lizard Ranch. He has a lot of informative videos, and you can also find him on Instagram and on YouTube as well. Colorful Color Lizard Ranch, is, he's a good guy that also helped me out through my process of brumation. But yeah guys, make sure you guys do a lot of research before you do this because it is a scary process. Even I was scared when I first did it. And after a few months, your females will start to develop these blush and then they'll start to breed. So expect some babies soon. If you guys have any questions, be sure you comment them down below and I'll try to get to every single one of you guys. Also, you can send me a DM through Instagram. It's the same as my YouTube channel, ER Bros. And yeah, I'll answer your questions on there. I'm also more active on Instagram. I post a lot of pictures and videos on there. So be sure you follow me on Instagram. So today's post notification shout out goes to Tropical Exotics. Thank you so much for turning on those post notifications. Whoever else will want to post notification shout out, be sure you turn them on and then just comment down below when done so I know who has done that. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this brumation video and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.